So we talked about uh, transport equation or advection, and we also talked about diffusion, which is where something sort of spreads out and dissipates. Um, it's possible that these processes can combine. So if you imagine that, you know, say you dump some chemical, maybe a pollutant or something in a river, it might diffuse as it gets washed away down uh, downstream by the current. And you could even include a decay term uh, if perhaps part of it is, is breaking down as it's in the river due to some chemical reaction or something like that. So, um, uh, so, so it's easy enough to write an equation that incorporates all these terms or incorporates all these processes. You just have to have a term for each process. So uh, for an advection diffusion decay equation, we would have the um, advection component and then we would have the uh, diffusion component and then we would have the uh, decay component. So let me just label these here. So we've, we've got the uh, advection or transport part, and then we have the uh, diffusion part, and then we have the um, decay part. Okay, so um, an example of a situation like this, um, let's see, suppose we've got uh, something like, uh, let's do it without the advection. So we've just got ut is du xx minus lambda u, and we'll give it some um, uh, initial and boundary conditions. So the initial conditions will be something that we don't care about <clears throat> and that's because I'm going to look at the steady state solution for this guy and then boundary conditions of uh, let's say that uh, at the left end it's uh, fixed equal to zero and at the right end we'll give it some mixed boundary condition where now this is a condition on the, the space derivative and this will be minus one so the idea here is that the value is fixed equal to zero at um, at the one endpoint, and then at the other endpoint here we are um, we're going to be adding stuff into the system, so say pouring uh, chemicals into the river at a steady rate. Okay, so then the, uh, the steady state equation, or equilibrium equation, uh, that's going to be what we get when um, this time derivative part tends to zero. So in that case we'll end up with just uh, duxx equals lambda u, and so this is actually, um, this is an eigenproblem. Right, so this is L u is equal to lambda over d, so that's some scalar, times u, where L is the uh, second derivative operator, or actually the one-dimensional uh, Laplace operator. Okay, so um, the uh, the general solution for this guy you can find using basic techniques. Hopefully, you remember from your ODE course. It's going to look like A times uh, cosh of root lambda over dx plus b times cinch, hyperbolic sine, root lambda over d x. And I, I prefer the um, to use the vector space basis of cosh and cinch. Um, this has the same span. Oh, I didn't write my variables. Let me write my variables. Um, as the span of e to the x, e to the minus x. Uh, which is clear once you look at the definition for cosh and cinch in terms of exponential functions. Um, 
But the reason why I like using the hyperbolic trig functions is because it makes it much easier with um, uh, boundary conditions. So when we go to find uh, what the a and b are in this situation using using boundary conditions, let's see. So at the left endpoint, we'll have 0 is equal to u of 0. And so this is a times, and then uh, cos of 0 is just 1, and sinh of 0 is just 0. So that equation right there becomes very simple. Um, it allows you to figure out right away that uh, a is equal to 0 without having to do any row operations or whatever to reduce your linear system. So that's why I like using uh, cos and sinh instead of uh, having to work with the 2 by 2 linear system that you would get by, by using e to the x and e to the minus x. Um, okay, so let's see. So a is equal to 0, so then that tells us that our um, general solution is, whoops, what did I do there? Um, just got simpler and <clears throat> um, so then for the other boundary condition well, I guess I should have this moved over some for the other boundary condition we're gonna have to uh, differentiate because the other boundary condition is on u sub x so we take the derivative with respect to x and this uh, is going to kick out um, a factor of root lambda over d and derivative of cosh is cinch and derivative of cinch is cosh. So we have this guy. Um, and then the initial condition now is that uh, minus 1 is equal to, actually, you know what? Let me simplify just a little bit. So I'm going to take uh, this equation here and rewrite it as uh, saying that ux at L is 1 over d. And then, so I've got uh, 1 over d is ux at L. And then what do I have here? I've got b and root lambda over d cosh of, and then, well, that doesn't simplify at all. It's just an ugly mess. Okay, but there it is. You can still at least solve for b. So b is going to be, um, let's see, so square root of lambda d times cosh of root lambda over dl in the denominator. And so then your steady state solution um, is going to look like cinch root lambda over d x divided by uh, root lambda d cosh root lambda over d times l. And there you have it, warts and all. Like I said, it's not pretty, but oh well. Um, oh, and then I guess just before I sign off, Let's take a look at what that sucker looks like. So it's going to be um, fixed equal to 0 at one endpoint, and then at the other endpoint of the interval, it's going to be uh, up here, and so we're going to have some cinch, which will look kind of like that. <laughs>